I don't understand. I hear. Oh, um, for those of you who are wondering where those videos are, if you go to modules, unit three at the bottom, these are the two I was talking about. Next semester, I'm going to have going back to my five units. I don't like the three unit. And I'll have your, your tests graded. I've graded some of them, not all of them. I'll have those graded sooner than later, hopefully by the, tonight. I'm going to do a marathon <laughs> grading of those tests. It's hard to grade them online. It's a real pain. It takes five times longer to grade them online. Uh, I'm almost ready to just print them all out. Do it. Okay. Um, okay. If you if you look at um, those two videos that I assigned, one is called qualitative. The yeah, other's called quantitative. Qualitative means there's no math. Quantitative means it's mathematical. Now, the thing about the quantitative one is, um, let me back up. The thing about the qualitative one is how a solution actually looks if you had a microscope, a really good microscope. Um, what happens is there are two forces at play that pull the crystal apart into solution. And there's another force that keeps it together. And I mentioned this before, one was called solvating force, the other is called crystal lattice force. And if you remember that, we talked about double replacement reactions. Okay, um, so the quantitative aspect is then, how do you measure how concentrated something is? Okay, you're gonna, there's a new term we're gonna be using, it's called molarity. Now, your book talks about molarity, and it also talks about something called molality. And they almost are the same, but they're not. Almost the same. Okay? Molarity is defined by moles of solute. That's the stuff that dissolves. Moles of solute over liters of solution. The solution includes the solute and the solvent. Molality, and it's uh, abbreviated, <laughs> excuse me, it's abbreviated capital M, uppercase M, <laughs> um, uppercase M, and I usually put a line under it and bold faced it. But sometimes, it depends what you're reading. Textbooks sometimes just bold face it. Other times I italicize it, but it's usually always uppercase. Also, also, it's square brackets. So molarity is the M, uppercase M, or square brackets. So for example, Square bracket of hydrogen ion constant is is equal to uh, one point five one moles per liter. Okay, so molarity is moles per liter. <laughs> so we have two kinds of liters now. We have gaseous liters, ideal conditions twenty two point four liters per mole, and we have liquid liters. They're totally unrelated. 
Okay. So when you see the leaders, think now, are we talking about solution now? Or are we talking about gases? Keep them separate. Now, this other one, this molality is a lowercase m italicized boldface. And it's moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. It doesn't matter what the solvent is or solute, or just a kilogram of it. Now, this is used a lot in 1A and 2A. Because when you add stuff to a liquid, it changes the boiling point and melting point. That's why you put salt on the sidewalk when you have a freeze, because it lowers the melting point of that icy stuff. Okay, and to calculate that, you use molality. But we're not going to talk about molality and chem A, just molarity, which is moles of solute in over liters of solution. Now, real quickly, a solution is made up of two things, always. Solute, and that can be more than one. And solvent. <clears throat> solvent is always one, no exceptions. Solute is one or more. Now a solution can be a combination of gases, Solids and liquids, solid and solid, or liquid and liquid. <clears throat> A solution, though, has to be, no exceptions, homogeneous. So let me give you some examples. When you go down to the store and buy vinegar, it's not pure vinegar. It's 5% acetic acid, 95% water. Is that a solution? So the question to ask is, can I see the difference between the acetic acid molecules and the water molecules in that vinegar? No, so it's a solution. What about if I put oil and water together? Is that a solution? No, because they're not homogeneous, they're heterogeneous. I can see the oil, I can see the water. And we can fix that with a emulsifier, but not putting an emulsifier in, the oil stays with the oil and the water stays with the water and never they meet. This room, we have a solution of gases in this room. We have nitrogen gas, carbon dioxide, hopefully not much carbon monoxide, oxygen, those are all the gases in here. The solvent is nitrogen gas because it's the most. All the other gases are the solutes. That's the carbon monoxides, the carbon dioxides, oxygen. I don't have my, I don't have a gold ring on, but I had a gold ring. That's also a solution of copper and gold. And you cannot distinguish between the gold and the copper. So it's a homogeneous mixture of two metals. So most people, when they think of solutions, they think of liquids. But it's much, much broader than that. It includes lots of stuff. You can also have dissolved gases in a liquid. You can have dissolved solids in a liquid, as long as they're homogeneous and they're, and they're mixed, you know, just totally dissolved. So it doesn't have to be all liquids or all solids or all gases. It can be a mixture as long as it's homogeneous.
Now we're gonna focus on the quantitative aspects of the solid and liquid. Okay, so we're narrowing it down by a fair amount. I'm sorry? Of solids and liquids. Now the stockroom people, when they get a work order for our labs, they'll say, I want a five molar solution of acetic acid. Now they can, that can be made one of two ways, with dry ingredients, dry solutes, or wet ingredients. In other words, they're taking something concentrated and diluting it. So that's two types of problems you're gonna run into. So if you work in the stock room, you do that day in and day out. That's 90% of your job, making up solutions for labs. Okay, so. All right, so if I had 3.10 liters of water and I threw in five grams of salt, what's the concentration of that salt solution? Well, definition of concentration is moles per liter. That means the, we have to figure out the moles of solute. What's the solute there? Yeah, it's the sodium chloride, right? So we need to calculate the molar mass of sodium chloride from the periodic table, which is 58.44. So we're taking that five grams now. It's not grams per liter, it's moles per liter. It's gotta get the grams to moles. Okay, so we multiply moles over grams. So grams cancel gives us moles of sodium chloride over 3.10 liters. Now, it's moles per one liter, not 3.10 liters, moles per one liter. So to get per one liter, what we're going to do is we're going to divide the 3.10 into the moles. So it's gonna end up at 0276 moles per liter. So I want you to think in your head all the time now, molarity is moles per liter whenever you see the M. Okay, moles per liter. Now, how would you do this on your calculator? So basically what we're gonna do is Always consider sig figs like we always do. And so we're going to go five divided by 58.44, divide again 3.1. So the answer is 0.2. So it's three sick pigs, so our answer is 276, or 2.76 times 10 to the minus two. Either answer is acceptable. Now, depending on your next class, they may tell you all numbers need to be scientific notation, which to me is purpose of scientific notation is to make awkward numbers less awkward. Well. This is a borderline number. Is 0.0276 awkward for you? If it is, throw it in scientific notation. If, it's, if you're fine with that, just leave it the way it is. But this is a good example of a borderline number being awkward. Okay, so if we're preparing dry ingredients in a, for making up a solution, bless you. We're going to be calculating moles again here. Molar mass from the periodic table. So
Similar problem. 3.10 grams sodium chloride in water. What's the solute there? Sodium chloride, what's the solvent? What? So this would be an AQ, an aqueous solution of sodium chloride. So we've got so many grams in so much water. So it's two division problems again, 3.10 divided by 5844 divided by 2.65, and we'll end up with this guy. And again, that or two times 10 to the minus two. Okay, are we okay so far? Yeah. So we're going to divide by 5844. That gives us moles. And we're going to divide by the volume, the uh, 265 liters. Just, just hit the divide key twice. Or you can do it separately, then you know, two steps. But you can do it all in one step if you want. Okay, so that's one approach. I've got so many grams, so much water. What's the concentration? What if I tell you we have 3.65 liters of 0.175 molar sodium chloride, how much salt do I have? This would be like a problem the stockroom would be. Okay, on the work order, it says make 14 liters of 2.8 molar hydrochloric acid. How do you make it? Well. Think of this as a two-step problem. First of all, how many moles is this involved? Now remember, molarity is moles per liter. So if we multiply the volume times the concentration, we end up with moles. So that's how we get the moles of solute if you're given the concentration. We need it volume. If you don't have the volume, we can't calculate the moles. Okay, so we have a volume, 365 liters. We have concentration. Multiplying those two together gives us moles. And then if we have moles, then we can get grams, in molar mass, yeah. Say again louder. <laughs> You mean the volume? You're calculating how to make it. So what you end up with is grams. Yeah, but you need volume to figure out how many moles you got with the concentration. That's where the volume comes in. So when you multiply the volume times the concentration, the volume cancels, leaves you with moles. And then for moles, we can get grams. Okay, and I want you to just, if you think about it in two steps, it's. I think it's, you can do this all in one step. I think it's clear if you do it in two steps. All right, so again, whenever we see that M with a line under it, that's moles per liter. Moles per liter times liters is moles, okay. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna calculate, we're gonna calculate moles. So we've got the volume, 365 liters. We got the concentration, 175 moles per liter, we multiply those together, we end up with moles. Okay, now we have moles. Once we have moles now from the periodic table, we're gonna get grams. So, how do I mix that up? 
what are the directions to mix up that solution? Okay, solution is, your job is to make 3.65 liters of a 1.175 molar solution. How would you do that? There are two, day, two ways. One way is correct, one way is not. I officially have a blurry eye, and it's my good eye too. <laughs> That's not a good one to be blurry. <clears throat> oh, you're all crystal clear again. Okay, give me one way to mix that up. That's true. You got to stir it. How do we do that? We just calculated how many grams of salt we needed to add. Well, one way would be to take the 37.3 grams of salt we just calculated plus 365 of water, right? We dump in the salt, we dump in the water, we're done, right? That's one way to do it. What's another way to do it? Huh? I didn't say whether it was a correct way or not. <laughs> okay, what's the other way to make this? And we'll talk about why one is better than the other. How else can we do this? You all know how to do this. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna to have to tell you, I guess, I'm gonna take a little bit I'm gonna take 37.3 grams of salt and add it to one liter of water till it's dissolved. Then we're going to bring the volume up to 365 liters. Okay, who has sat in a bathtub? Anyone in here? Okay, when you sit in the bathtub, what does the water do? It goes up. It's, so if you had 50 liters of water in the bathtub, you sit in that, you no longer have 50 liters of water. Total volume, you've got more. Same amount of water, but the water level came up. So the volume is now more. So if we take 365 liters of water, and dump in 37 grams and change of sodium chloride, what's the solution volume gonna do? It's gonna go up. It's no longer gonna be 365. So, that is not the correct way to make up a solution. The correct way to solution is you get the, the grams of solute totally dissolved First, then you bring the volume up to whatever you needed to be, okay? So we throw in the 37.3 grams of salt in any volume at all, as long as it's less than what you end up with. We could have said two liters. We could have said three liters, as long as it's not 365, something less than the total volume. Totally doesn't matter. If you want to throw in one liter all the time to simplify your life, do it. But it doesn't really matter. As long as it's less than the total volume and you get it totally dissolved, so it becomes homogeneous. Every little bit of salt is totally dissolved into solution. 
then bring your volume up to 365, okay? So a typical question is going to be, how would you make up this solution? I want 1.24 liters of 1.68 molar sodium chloride. How would you make up? So the first part of that is to calculate how much salt you need. The second part is directions how to mix it. Hmm? Okay, so that would be number two here. All we're doing here is we have a volume, we have concentration, multiply them together, we'll get moles, and we convert the moles to grams. So this will be the second video on this. The other one uh, is another one for you to look at, and it'll have different examples from theoretically. Okay, similar problem. This one, I want directions. So I'd go through here, Multiply the volume times the concentration, gives me moles, convert the moles to grams. And then I'm going to say, dissolve 392 grams of sodium chloride in three liters of water till totally dissolved, then bring the volume up to 512. So we looked at this. So we throw in 392 grams of solute, sodium chloride, in this three liters or four liters or 5.0 liters or one liter, as long as it's less than 512. Totally get it dissolved. Then we bring the final volume up to five, oops. Five twelve. That will be. Friday's, one of Friday's questions, guaranteed. Okay. Um, so that's making the solution starting with dry ingredients. What if we want to make it with a concentrated solution. In other words, instead of dry sodium chloride, what if we had a super concentrated salt solution already made up, but we want to dilute it? Now, this is how things are sold at, when you go to, as, as a chemistry um, uh, lab, when you buy chemicals, you buy them as concentrated liquids like Acids are frequently liquids that are concentrated and you dilute them to whatever you want or you buy them in dry. Acids don't come dry except for KSP like we used on our last lab, the titration lab. Normally acids are liquids. Okay, so how do we start from a concentrated solution and dilute it? Bless you. Okay, typical problem. I want 23.5 liter solution of 
molar sodium chloride solution. And I have a concentrated solution of 4.56. How do I make this? So basically, you've got to dilute the concentrated. So there's two volumes here to worry about. What's the volume of the concentrate you need? And then what's the final volume of solution to bring it up to whatever your level is? Okay, so let me do this graphically for you here. Okay, what we're doing basically is we're taking a concentrated solution. That means we have so many particles or so many molecules in a small volume. And then we're gonna take that same number of particles or molecules and add extra solvent, usually water in our case. So the mole of particles you start with and the concentrated is equal to the moles of particles in the dilute. Because we're not adding molecules, we're adding only solvent. So the solute mo moles is the same. We're just adding solvent. Is everyone okay with that? So if we have five marbles, in one liter water, we throw in four more liters of water to bring up to five levels. We still got five marbles in there. We haven't added any marbles. So that means the moles of marbles ha hasn't changed. The moles of marbles and the concentrated equal moles of marble in the dilute. Now, how did we get from that last dry example? How do we get to moles, if we know the concentration and we know the liters, how do we get there? Do we add, divide, multiply, subtract? What do we do? Hmm? We multiplied. So if we know that so if we want to calculate the moles of something in solutions now, we're going to multiply the concentration, which is moles per liter times the volume. So the moles per liter times the volume of concentrated equals So we have concentrated, dilute. So the two volumes are not the same. One's a concentrated volume, one's a dilute volume. And those are gonna be equal. So now we have a new relationship. So the moles, so the moles per liter, the concentration times the volume of the concentrate equals the new concentration dilute times the volume of the dilute. Those are equal. So we have four variables. That means we need three knowns in the four variables before we can solve the fourth one. Usually the one we're trying to calculate is the volume of concentrate. How much of the concentrate do we need to put in to dilute? So usually 99% of the time we want to know the volume of the concentrate.
So how much concentrated solution that's equal to the concentration of the dilute times the volume of the dilute over the concentration of the uh, of the concentrated liquid. So you need to know that to do all these problems. And that's derived from this guy here. ML is equal to ML. ML concentrated equals ML dilute. So we have the diluted and we have the concentrated. So the question is how much of that 24 molar concentrated solution do we need? Okay, to calculate that, we're going to use that equation we just derived. So we're going to solve for the volume of the concentrate. Okay, and this is the dilute here. This is the concentrated. This is the dilute. So you have two, two concentrations. One you start with, one you end with. Two volumes. One you start with, one you end with. Okay, so doing this, we're going to end up with 1.57 liters of concentrated sodium chloride. So you're going to multiply 523 times 712, hit the divide key, 24, enter. Three sig figs, okay, 1.57 liters of concentrated. But we don't want 1.57. We want a total of 512. 712. So 712 minus 1.57 equals 55, 5.55 liters. Of solvent. So we bring it up to the final volume. So step number one is calculate volume of concentrate. Step two is to calculate how much water you need to add to bring it up to final volume. So that's that's the second part of this. So the directions would say take 1.6. So the directions for mixing this would be Take 1.57, I run it into 1.6, but keep the sig figs there. 1.57 liters of concentrated sodium chloride solution. Let's add that. Then add 5.52 liters of water to bring the final diluted volume to 712. So when you're doing these problems, I want you to think in your head, okay, I'm working for a lab. How do I mix this stuff up? It's one thing to do this math on paper, but you've got to figure out how to actually make it. Okay, so everyone okay with this process? I'm going to do another example here in a minute. Okay, let's do another one here. I want 23, let's do this from scratch.
Okay, I want 23.5 liters of solution of 1.02 molar sodium chloride solution. I want to make that from a 4.56 molar concentrated solution. How would you make it? Now, when I say, how are you going to make it? I want directions. So first is the math part, then the directions. Okay, so we have Okay, the dilute volume is 23.5. That's the dilute concentration. So we're going to do MV equal to MV. So dilute concentrated. Okay. On the dilution side, we've got 23.5 liters at a concentration of 102 moles per liter. On the concentrated side, we have 4.56 moles per liter. And we have unknown liters of concentrate. So now we sell, we solve for L concentrate. So that's 23, 23.5 times 102 divided by 456. Okay, so that's 5.26 liters of the concentrated sodium chloride. So directions. I'm going to take the 526 liters of the concentrated sodium chloride, add something less than 23.5 liters, let's say 10 liters, doesn't matter. Okay, we're going to Mix it to dissolve it. Then how much water do we need to add to bring it up to 23.5? Well, that's a subtraction problem. So we're going to be 23.5 minus the 526. So now we're going to add to that 20, or we're going to add to that 18.24 liters of water.
OK, so those are the two type problems, starting from dry, starting from wet. Dry, we need to calculate. Um, we're looking at uh, grams in molar mass on the periodic table. Starting from wet, we're starting from a concentration, a known concentration, and a known concentration for where we want to end up with. So that's going to be concentration times volume equals concentration times volume of concentrated versus dilute. OK? Now you're going to see both these problems next week. And If you go to modules, unit five, unit five is on solutions, um, and click down to um, text problems. These would, be, these would be good problems to practice. Also, if you go to files, unit five on solutions, you'll see making solutions, making solutions, Molarity worksheet, molarity worksheet, lots of practice, lots of practice. Making dilutions, that's wet, starting from wet. Okay. So I would like you to practice those. And um, if you get these ones not in the from the textbook problems, half of them are give answers, but it only gives the answers, not the setup. If you do my worksheet problems, I give you the setup as well. So if you get it wrong, you'll look at the setup and either you, your calculator is a calculator error, you set it up fine, or your setup was wrong. At least you know how to set it up. Okay. But what your final volume, everyone will be the same. So the, the volume where no one's going to differ is how many liters of concentrated. That'll be the same. And with the dry, you can add as much, as long as it's not the total, as you want. And you have not the diluted when you start with dry. Then you just have to add a little bit of water to get it totally dissolved, whether it's one liter, two liters, as long as it's not the final volume. And that's where everyone will be different, unless you just want to always use one liter, <laughs> which is fine. Um, but it really doesn't matter. You just have to get it dissolved. Then you bring it up to final volume. Does that make sense? OK. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, uh, for those of you who are taking 2A on Friday, Saturday, uh, don't forget there's a tutoring session on Fridays. I'm presuming it'll be Friday next semester as well. And you can go to that before your lecture starts. You're also welcome to come in here and listen to my lecture as well. More than welcome. Don't worry about even asking. Just come on in. Now I'm going to be in AT3. AT3 is in the back of this building. And it's a separate separate room. It's a portable building that they made permanent. Mark Twain said, there's nothing more permanent than a temporary building, which is 
<laughs> True as schools. Okay, so that's what I wanted to cover today. There's one more nuance I'm going to cover tomorrow, and that's if I have And that's if I have two solutions of sodium chloride and I dump them together. What's the final concentration? I won't want to go over that today. I want to make sure you, I'd like for you, if possible, practice some of these molarity problems tonight before tomorrow. Because tomorrow I want to launch into acids and bases and concentrations of acids and bases are right in there. Okay. All right, so I'll see everyone in lab. I'll see the Friday folks in lab, I should say, yeah. On what? Yeah, the, the study questions are, uh, there's two of them, there's some that are textbook. Next semester, a lot of you are taking 2A. And there's a 2A class starting after my Chem A class. It starts at three, I think. Um, but there's a tutoring session that's, um, what time is the tutoring session? 11 to two. Yeah, they have snacks and drinks and it's really cool. And it's in, um, it's in room 102 which is directly across from our old room, Fridays. So if you're taking 2A on Friday, it works right in.